मैम प्लीज स्टार्ट ओके रूमा मैम थैंक यू अ वेरी वॉर्म गुड इवनिंग रिस्पेक्टेड प्रेसिडेंट धर्मपेट एजुकेशन सोसाइटी एडवोकेट उल्हास जी औरंगाबाद कर वाइस प्रेसिडेंट एडवोकेट संजीव देश पांडे जी सेक्रेटरी श्री रत्नाकर केकतपुरे जी मेंबर्स ऑफ द मैनेजमेंट आ प्रिंसिपल धर्मपेट एम पी डी ओ मेमोरियल साइंस कॉलेज नागपुर डॉक्टर अखिलेश पेशवे आ चीफ गेस्ट एंड की नोट स्पीकर ऑनरेबल डायरेक्टर जनरल काउंसिल ऑफ साइंटिस्ट एंड इंडस्ट्रियल रिसर्च मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया डॉक्टर शेखर मांडे स्पेशल इनवाइटीज साइंटिस्ट गेस्ट कलीग्स एंड माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स रिवर्स run through our history and folklore and link us as a people they nourish us and refresh us and provide a home for dazzling varieties of fish and wildlife and trees and plants of every sort we are a nation rich in rivers i mrs sujata ali welcome you all for our golden jubilee science lecture series that is being conducted online by dhampet mpdo memorial science college nagpur on the topic conservation of rivers research opportunities role of stakeholders and the future of the nation we commence today's program by seeking the blessings of ma saraswati who we regard as an embodiment of all knowledge and wisdom today india stands tall basking in the glory of a resurgent nation with its head held high and its name being felled in the international scene with the world taking note of a transforming india the juggernaut continues as india completes a 75 reliving the dreams of an independent nation but it's not without its own set of challenges a country where more than 65% of the population is youth it has an extraordinary set of challenges in front of them the challenges are real and they are many and how our young minds deal with them is what is going to define the course of our great nation's future former president of india his excellency pranab mukherjee in his inaugural presidential address had said that if there is ever going to be a third world war it will be fought for clean water despite rising water levels the challenge for clean water and usable water still prevails especially when all our rivers are either depleting or dying with pollution with ever rising demands for sustainability at an all time high research gains precedence over all else this is when you rope in young minds to invest their time and energy into scientific research to engineer sustainable growth because it is the youth who are the true stakeholders of the nation may i now call upon our principal dharampet mpdo memorial science college nagpur dr akilesh peshwe to give the opening remarks thank you madam ali we tributes to goddess saraswati and the founding fathers of our institutions on the auspicious occasion of vasant panchmi i begin highly renowned scientists of india today's chief guest and keynote speaker honorable director general csir professor shekhar mande sir honorable president of dharampet education society and president of today's function advocate ullah ji aurangabad ka honorable secretary shri ratnakar ji kekatpure and honorable vice president advocate sanjeev ji desh pande joint secretary shri ram krishna kulkarni and treasurer shri apte sir very highly respected executive members of the rampet education society 
esteemed principals of the Rambed Education Society, respected colleagues, dear vice principals, supervisors, and IQSC coordinator, and dear students. Precious and prestigious presence of you all have made this evening electrifying. All these years since inception, our institution has contributed to the society through several ways. The institution has groomed and shaped renowned military officials, politicians, policy makers, social scientists, famous, famous award winners, social workers of extremely high repute, as you all know. I'm extremely glad to share that Padma Shri Dr. Dhananjay Ji Sakdev, who dedicated all his life for the tribals of Wainard, was the student of our institution in 1972. Also, I'm happy to share with you all that Madam Mande is our alumni in, of the 1882 batch and sir, our humble regards to her. The Jubilee year began with the inaugural ceremony at the auspicious hands of Pujjashri Payaji Soshi, Sarkari Baha of Rashtriya Samsak Sangh. The Golden Jubilee Lecture Series marked its fortunate beginning the same year in 18, 2018 with a remarkable address by Honorable Vijay Ji Bhatkar. He spoke on synthesis of science and spirituality then we had Professor Shiva Prakash from IISC Bangalore, and today we have Honorable Director General CSIR Professor Shekhar Mandesar to enlighten us on one of the cardinal topics of rivers. Dear children, Golden Jubilee Lecture Series is a part of Vidyan Sanskar of our institution for all of you, where you get to meet stalwarts and renowned scientists of our nation. The extremely valuable address, these extremely valuable address should reveal to you reasons of your precious life, reason of why you are a science student, so that like them, you also prove to be a blessing to the society and to the world at large. May this speech inspire you forever and transform your life into a golden lighthouse of achievement and commitment for the nation. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. Thank you. Ali madam, unmute karo. Namaskar. Ali madam. Uh, madam, carry on. Okay. Good evening, everyone. President of Dharampet Education Society, and President of today's program, Honorable Advocate Shri Ulla Sarangabad Karsar, Vice President, Advocate Shri Sanju Deshpandeji, Secretary, Respected Shri Ratna Karkekat Puresar, other esteemed members of the management, today's Chief Guest, Honorable Dr. Shekhar Mande, Director General of Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, and Secretary in Department of Scientific and Industrial Research, Ministry of Science and Technology, Government of India, Principal of the College, Dr. Akhilesh Peshwesar, academic luminaries, invitees, my colleagues, and dear students. As you all know, today is the Vasanta Panchami, a day to celebrate knowledge. And we all are fortunate to have amongst us Honorable Dr. Shekhar Mande, an epitome of knowledge, a brilliant researcher, and a very good administ administrator who as such needs no introduction. I'm indeed delighted to introduce such a great personality to the audience. Dr. Shekhar Chintamani Mande is an Indian structural and computational biologist. He did his BSc with PCM group and MSc in physics from the Nagpur University in the year 1984. At MSc, his specialization was X-ray crystallography, and electronics. He was awarded PhD from Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, in molecular biophysics in the year 1991. Following his PhD, he joined as postdoctoral fellow at Rijksu University, Groningen, Netherlands, where he spent almost a year. Later on, he moved to the University of Washington, Seattle, USA, and worked there as a senior research fellow from 1992 to 1995. Then he migrated to India and joined as scientist C 
in the prestigious Institute of Microbial Technology, Chandigarh, where he worked till 2001. From 2001 to August 2011, he was at Center for DNA Fingerprinting and Diagnostics at Hyderabad and worked there in various senior positions as staff scientist. In 2010 and 11, he became senior most staff scientist, grade seven at Hyderabad. During his tenure, he did some pioneering work in the field of computational biology, application of graph theory to large scale protein interaction network, computational methods to analyze large scale biological data. He also worked on biology of mycobacterium tuberculosis, protein structure, function, its analysis, proteomics and genomics area. In the year 2011, he was appointed as director of National Center for Cell Sciences Pune. And after a brief stint here, he was appointed to the current coveted post of director general of Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, CSIR, in the year 2018. He is also secretary in the Department of Scientific and Industrial Research, Ministry of Science and Technology, Government of India. Sir has illustrious career like his great father, late Professor Chintamani Mande, who was the doyen in the field of physics. Dr. Shekhar Mande is a highly decorated scientist and has received many awards and honors in his career. To name some few, he is the recipient of B.M. Birla Young Scientist Award. He also received very prestigious Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Award for Science and Technology in the year 2005. He was conferred with Bharat, Bharat Asmita Award of MIT World Peace University Pune in the year 2009 and HK Firodia Vigyan Bhushan Award in the year 2020. He is also a fellow of Indian National Science Academy New Delhi, elected in the year 2010, then fellow of National Academy of Science Allahabad, elected in the year 2003, and fellow Indian Academy of Sciences Bangalore, elected in the year 2003. Before moving to Delhi in the year 2018, Dr. Mande served on many advisory committees, including task forces of uh, Department of Biotechnology and Department of Science and Technology Government of India. He used to chair the basic science task force of the Department of Biotechnology and was a core member of the biophysics, biochemistry, molecular biology and microbiology task force of the science and engineering research board of the Department of Science and Technology. He also served as a member of the management council of Tata Institute of Fundamental Research Mumbai as a representative of the Maharashtra state government. He used to be a member of the management council of Solapur University and Savitri Bai Phule University Pune. He is the member of the governing body of the Indo-French Center for Promotion of Advanced Research and served as a member of the research council of the Institute of Genomics and Integrative Biology, New Delhi. Until December 2019, he served as the chair the National Committee for the International Union of Crystallography of the Indian National Science Academy, New Delhi. He was also the Vice President of Vigyan Bharti. Uh, friends, uh, Dr. Mande is an ardent researcher and worked assiduously to promote research in our country. His work will definitely help the young generation understand and appreciate the nuances in it. We have a personal association with him as his wife, Dr. Sharmila Mande, who is also an acclaimed researcher, is alumnus of our college. Dr. Peshwe already mentioned this. Today, we are truly blessed to have his gracious presence amongst us. But before we begin with his lecture, let us virtually felicitate him with shawl, shrifar, and memento. To do this honor, I invite and request our Honorable Principal, Dr. Akhilesh Peshwe, sir, to felicitate Honorable Dr. Shekhar Mande. Over 
to well, the sir <laughs> we have this uh, bharat mata memento for you and we are sending it to your delhi address and um, kindly accept this on behalf of our president and the esteem bs members and all of us here thank you so much thank you sir over to ali madam thank you madam thank you sir i humbly request our president dharampet education society advocate ullas ji aurangabad kar to deliver his presidential address good evening everybody respected uh, dr shekhar mande sir principal dharampet mp dev memorial science college dr akhilesh peshwe the other staff members including vice principal teaching and non teaching staff members of the college my colleagues in the executive committee of dharampet education society and all those who are present virtually through various modes to attend this lecture to be delivered by dr shekhar mande who has been introduced at length by dr kulkarni i am really proud for two reasons firstly proud to be the president of a society which in a span of almost 5 to 6 years will start its centenary celebrations established in the year of 1929 the rampet education society will complete 100 years in 2029 and the society which has deep roots in the uh, city of nagpur is established and has established its fame for the quality of education quality of teachers quality of teaching secondly i am proud to pro to present before you no doubt dr shekhar mande director csir but i am really proud to share that dr shekhar mande is a batchmate of mine and i too studied science for couple of years then i left that because destiny was something else but i am fortunate to have a good friend in the name of dr shekhar mande and when i requested dr mande that will he deliver a lecture for dharampet science college he readily and immediately accepted and it is because of the compulsions and the restrictions of corona that we could not hear dr shekhar mande physically but otherwise we will be delighted whenever we get the opportunity we will request dr shekhar mande to visit our college and have the interaction at least with our staff members so sir i request you to kindly start your lecture without taking much time because everybody is eager to hear to you sir thank you thank you very much thank you so much sir i stand by the river and i know that it has been here yesterday and will be here tomorrow and that therefore since i am a part of its pattern today i also belong to all its yesterdays and will be a part of all its tomorrows this is a kind of earthly immortality a kinship with rivers and hills and rocks with all things and all creatures that have ever lived or ever will live or have there been on this earth it is my assurance of an orderly continuity in the great design of the universe without further ado i request our chief guest and keynote speaker of today's golden jubilee science lecture series honorable director general council of scientists and industrial research ministry of science and technology government of india dr shekhar ande to deliver his lecture on the topic conservation of rivers research opportunities role of stakeholders and the future of the nation sir thank you ali madam so very much the president of dharampet education society and my good friend sri ullas olongapatka advocate principal of the rampet mp dev memorial college dr akhilesh peshwe all the dignitaries present here on this particular forum teachers students 
Thank you all so very much in the first place for inviting me to give talk at this forum. Also, thank you, Kulkarni Madam, for very elaborately uh, describing my past. And I feel very humbled to actually be in front of all of you and speaking today. On the lighter note, as uh, uh, Advocate Aurangabad said, that I could not uh, have but accepted the invitation of the Rambet College for the fear at home or for the thing at home that if I had not accepted, probably I would not have been uh, having a very peaceful time at home. So I had no other choice but to accept, but it's my great pleasure and privilege to be with all of you. My wife is sitting in front of me and she is laughing, but nonetheless, uh, it's a privilege for me to be able to speak in all of you at this particular forum. I'm also humbled that some of the speakers that you mentioned in this series in the previously were people like Dr. Vijay Bhatka, whom we actually hold in great reverence uh, in many different aspects. He was the creator of the first supercomputer in India. And all of us look to his advice on many different aspects even today. So uh, I feel deeply humbled that you have invited me for the lecture series today. And I will try to do my best to tell you about India's rivers in the next about half an hour or so. And with your permission, I would like to share my slides. And I hope that my slides are visible to all of you now. Vishwa sir, this is the slides? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Sir. Good. So uh, basically, I was asked to talk about uh, 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 India's yes. rivers, especially conservation, research opportunities, opportunities and role of stakeholders for the future of our country. And I've taken extensive help from my colleagues in Niri Nagpur, as all of you know, Niri is one of the CSIR institutes. So those of you who probably have not heard about CSIR, we are a chain of 37 laboratories across the country. And we span many different areas like aerospace through our National Aerospace Laboratory in Bangalore, or chemicals, through our laboratory, National Chemical Laboratory in Pune, or environmental engineering through Niri Nakpo, and so on and so forth. And I have the privilege to head the organization right now of these 37 laboratories. And we do a lot of different kinds of works. Some of you probably would have seen that during COVID period, there's a large number of testing, genome sequencing, some of the drugs, and even the covaxin as an adjuvant that were made actually in the CSIR laboratory. So we are very proud as a scientific organization that we are bringing some value to the society. So I was told that I should talk about the rivers and I have taken help from my colleagues in Niri Nagpur and I will acknowledge them at the end of my talk. I don't have to actually tell in this audience uh, in the science college that water is an extraordinarily important ingredient of all life forms. You know, when our body, when we look at our body is made up of cells, individual cells. And in an adult, typically an adult contains 10 to the power 12, 10 to the power 13 cells in the body. And each cell in the body is about 70% water. So the 70% composition of all the cells is water. And therefore water is an extraordinarily important molecule of life. It, uh, expresses itself or manifests itself, its importance in many different aspects. Just to give one example, for example, when all of you will remember that when we do exercise, a very rigorous exercise, like running or swimming or playing tennis or something like that, at the end of the exercise, we are sweating profusely. And we are sweating because while performing the exercise, the body heats up. And the only way a body can cool it down is by the sweat. And the sweat, when it comes on the skin surface, it evaporates and it releases large amount of heat. And the basic property of water molecule is that it has a very high heat of vaporization. And that means when water converts itself into vapor, it releases large amount of heat into the environment. And as the way body actually cools itself down against the heat. The same thing happens when we have fever and we take paracetamol, essentially body sweats and the sweating actually helps cooling down the body in that respect. And that's the basic property of water. 
and water is considered to be therefore extremely important molecule in all forms of life whether it be plants insects animals humans everywhere water is very very important if you look at the water resources available to us in the planet the dominant resource of course is the oceans in which large amount of water is stored but it's saline water then another source is glaciers like in the high mountains like himalayas and all and the glaciers also store a large amount of water in them and principally the glaciers or the snow when it melts in these mountains they form rivers and these rivers essentially supply water to all humanity or all parts of life around the coast of them therefore we must actually assess ourselves first that how much water is available for use in india and let us take an estimate of that we have about roughly 9000 different kind of rivers or their tributaries but we as a country are roughly about 2 and 1/2% of the global land mass if you take all the land around the planet 2 and 1/2% of that belongs to india but we are also proud owner of about 4% fresh water resources in terms of all over rivers and lakes and all, in inland lakes and all but we also are a 16% of the global population and this population must survive on the availability of water from the rivers or the glaciers or otherwise and the availability of water has been becoming scarcer by the year for example in 1950 we were a water surplus country we had plenty of water per person for use in 1950s over a period of time we actually started becoming a water stressed country roughly 1990 onwards in which the water availability per capita had started reducing dramatically but what we are heading towards is water is really becoming scarce and we are actually heading towards what is now called as a water scarce country so the availability of water per capita has dropped dramatically and we are heading towards a situation which is very alarming at this stage so the availability of water has been considerably declining over the years and that's one of the challenges what we have for the future immediately to tackle now as i said water is extremely important and the use of water in cultivation of crops and all has long been known ever since we started cultivation of agriculture roughly about 12 to 15000 years ago we started making use of water for this particular irrigation purposes and what i show you here is one of the earliest examples of a dam on the river in this case the kaveri river near trichy in india is called as a kalanai dam and it was constructed in about roughly 1st or 2nd century ad and is one of the oldest dams still in use around the world and the purpose of the dam was to provide water for irrigation purposes to the farmers in the uh, chola kingdom then so as i said ever since human beings started cultivating agriculture about roughly 12000 years ago and we started cultivating crops like wheat barley jejube and so on and so forth we also started domesticating cattle like sheep goat and all and we started making two harvests a year following of the land and we generated very well developed irrigation systems all of it was possible because we were able to use water very judiciously from our fresh water resources and rivers are a major dominant part of the fresh water resources of the country so different sectors today which depend on the availability of water through rivers are things like agriculture and fisheries energy in terms of hydroelectric power and all potable water itself also transportation a lot of transportation in some of the states happens through water social and cultural uh, things as well and as i said the survey of india has recorded that there are about 9000 tributaries and small streams that originate from some of the major rivers of india and as all of you know if you count the major rivers of india 
there are rivers like brahmaputra the ganga the yamuna narmada godavari and so on so forth it is our duty to make sure that these rivers survive for a long long time to come and i'll come to this particular aspect towards the end of my talk once again so what are the challenges in river conservation so let us look at what challenges today we face in the conservation there are multiple challenges for example there's lot of industrial waste that is being discharged into the rivers across the country including nagpur this water that is run off water that comes from streets and all that is discharged into the river there is solid waste that is dumped into the river there are plastics this also actually you will find uh, is floating around on the river and there is municipal sewage that also is discharged in many parts of the country directly to the river and nagpur itself you will see what used to be once the great nag river is actually essentially has become now the great nag nala because of all these discharges and all and we must therefore make attempt to revive this and ensure that we can use this resources very judiciously and make sure that we don't allow this to degenerate for the future what impact does water pollution make on fresh water bodies as i said water pollution is essentially caused because of prolonged discharge of pollutants from both domestic as well as industrial resources into water bodies and that adversely impacts the entire ecosystem the discharge may contain toxic chemicals heavy metals and other Uh, components that can harm both human health as well as the life that our rivers support and prolonged exposures exposure of these toxic chemicals can even cause serious illnesses but of course other flora and fauna also gets affected because of pollution and in many cities in india more than 65% of municipal waste water is discharged untreated in the respective local water bodies so essentially what it impacts is damage to human health damage to biological diversity and damage to water supply uh, interruption and we will have to have actually this corrected very rapidly in the coming year urbanization has had a very bad impact on the river beds the example that i would like to share with you here is that of a river called musi river in hyderabad and what you see in these two photographs is on the left hand side is musi as it was in year 2000 and i have seen it myself musi in this particular form but because of rapid urbanization and establishment of colonies on both side of musi what you see here is musi is like this in fact in this figure the black uh, river body that you see is fairly pure water but the gray uh, body that you see here is much much more uh contaminated water so urbanization has had an adverse impact on all our rivers across the country and we have to have methods to reduce this particular impact on our water bodies and if you have to do actually economics of inaction if you don't do that we have tried to capture that economics in this particular slide and the total loss in terms of money can run into several hundreds of crores if we actually don't act on purifying our water bodies today the it can be calculated based on the high level of bod and cod uh, that goes actually into the river and that goes into supporting the life forms onto the river and we are going to see now in my lecture in what way we can actually remedy this situation what are the scientific scientific and technological solutions that we can evolve to correct this particular situation and government of india of course is acutely aware of this particular problem and different departments of the government of india are continuously trying to work very hard in providing science and technology solution to purify our water bodies for example government some years ago formed something called ministry of jal shakti entire ministry has been formed only for this particular reason to address our river bodies and make sure that good quality water is available to our future and as a credit to our government 
but different scientific departments such as the department of science, science and technology or department of biotechnology also promote research in the area on cleaning up or purifying these water bodies or coming up with solution that will help municipalities across the country to preserve our water bodies and that's where our research opportunities lie and let us look at some of the solutions that we can think of or some of the solutions that have already been done in uh, towards this particular one so to the students i would like to say that research opportunities in this particular area are immense the practically infinite opportunities that lie ahead of us in this particular area of cleaning up municipal waste cleaning up solid waste and cleaning up our rivers and fresh water bodies for example we can map and monitor our natural resources continuously as a function of time year on year we can keep mapping what natural resources are there and what is the biodiversity that exists there so the conservation of biodiversity and mapping of our natural resources can actually go hand in hand over a period of time to assess ourselves and to keep ourselves on our feet in trying to see what remedial measures can be taken we can work on sewage management methodologies and i will show you some of those uh, a little while we can work on treatment of industrial effluents so that effluents by the time they are discharged into the rivers it can be a pure water that can be actually discharged into the rivers we can work on management of runoff from dairy agriculture and livestock industries into the water bodies and you may actually see that things like an agriculture and dairy and livestock there are many things that are discharged into the water bodies that in fact what people have seen is also antimicrobial resistance and all is on the rise because of this discharge and because of the high bodies and all in the water continuously we get keep getting uh, the silt in the water and we have to actually keep desilting that and there research opportunities for that protecting of the catchment areas especially in large cities and all is another research opportunity that we can use in our civic planning and planning of larger cities for the future and urban land use management what actually needs to be done also presents a very good research opportunity for the future so if you were to map and monitor our natural resources just as an example what i mentioned in the previous uh, slide just only one example that i am going to take is the question that we ask that how do we maintain health of our rivers and to do that we need a two pronged approach first of all we want to actually maintain environmental flow into the river and we want to identify water bodies that actually need to be cleaned up or maintained to be clean and for this we need involvement of public participation and also awareness so a three pronged approach first is to identify rivers and their tributaries maintain the environmental flow and increase public participation and awareness if you are able to do all of this possibly we will to we will be able to maintain a healthy status of all our rivers how do we do that first of all we need to understand the health of the river using something called a gis based mapping now if you do actually gis based mapping and let us say map dissolved oxygen levels in the river for example in this case the ganga or if we monitor physical chemical parameters of the water quality once again in this case ganga and we actually try to see how this actually map throughout the course of ganga that will give us an assessment of which region need correction and go to that particular region and say that certain effluents that are coming into the river that need to be stopped and thankfully this kind of assessment is now being done by the government across different locations the, along the ganga the clean ganga mission has done some wonderful work over the last few years in trying to assess what all the regions that continuously need monitoring of cleanliness of ganga we also need to evolve appropriate sewage management methodologies and what i mean to do that is lot of sewage is dispersed into our rivers currently but the sewage if it is treated before dispersing into the river 
for example by using sewage treatment plants then the sanctity of the water body can still be maintained but sewage treatment plants tend to be costly they are very capital intensive and they are also costly to maintain and therefore we should also come up with solutions which are cheap and easily implementable at large scales in fact many people since ages have used microorganisms to treat waste water and we'll come to this particular one that how microorganisms can be used to treat treat waste water or particularly the sewage and i made made a mention of uh, the area of uh, our laboratory in nagpur to you we have a lab called niri nagpur that all of you are aware of and niri nagpur has come up with several technologies to clean up rivers across the country the example that you see here is what we call as in situ drain treatment technologies and this technology has been implemented at multiple places what you see here is at prayagraj just before the kumbh two years ago we were able to go and treat all the nallas which were discharging water into ganga and yamuna and by doing that we were actually able to ensure that at the sangam the water that was flowing in was pure water or was not as contaminated as was there previous to treatment so this particular technology of in situ treatment treats the drains as they flow into the river by a combination of engineering and biological components and biological component as i said is either floating plants or microbial treatment so which ensures that the treated water is actually pure or rather the contaminations don't come from the water into the uh, rivers as what we see it has also been christian as renew and what you see here is the example of that prior to our treatment it looked something like this and as you can see is water is quite dirty in this particular nalla but even we are actually able to generate this particular path along the nalla and then we constructed floating plants on this the water dramatically the water quality of input and output changed quite dramatically the input quality was something like this what you see here on the left hand side figure but the output was much much cleaner by this particular treatment what is offered is a very simple biological treatment of water impurities and plants are known actually to scavenge those impurities from impure water and many of you would have heard for example something called mangroves and all and the ecology of mangroves is very precisely very important for aspects such as this and just to show you an example this is the water before treatment and this is the water after treatment at this particular site in prayagraj and you can see for yourself that the quality of water has dramatically improved in the two waters we have also installed what is called as anoxic anoxic chamber at the, uh, the, the place and by actually constructing anoxic chamber we can also promote growth of certain kind of bacteria we don't require too much oxygen to grow and then a combination of those bacteria and combination of floating plants can really clean up the water that is coming out of that and this we have been able to implement under what is as called as the namami gange project to clean ganga so niri has been actually able to install this technology at many different places along ganga and yamuna and they are also trying to do the same across the country in many different places i have made the uh, reference to bacterial diversity or microorganismal diversity in the river and studying the microbial diversity helps us in understanding the ecosystem that functions along the river and therefore along the river if you are able to actually study what kind of bacteria and what kind of microorganisms grow and they can be mapped using a technique called metagenome we will not go into the technique and then if you can identify which kind of bacteria exist there and in what composition that give us very useful insights or that yields very interesting insights into the ecosystem function prediction and the microorganisms are present abundantly everywhere in nature you will be surprised to know that on our body also our body harbors 
several different kinds of bacteria and viruses all the time and surprisingly you will be very surprised to know that body has more number of bacterial and viral cells than our cells alone i told you some time ago that our body has 10 to the power 12 10 to the power 13 cells that are made up of our own human beings but body has about 10 to the power 14 10 to the power 15 bacterial cells and these bacteria live in our gut in our oral cavity on our skin and all possible things and all these bacteria are useful bacteria they help us maintain our health in the same manner bacteria also help maintaining the health of the environment and maintaining the rivers and therefore it's important that we map microbial diversity across all the river beds and make sure that diversity is maintained in order to maintain the health of the river and the degraded ecosystem has enormous impact on the river's health the impact of the degraded ecosystem on biodiversity can be seen at many different kinds of it can manifest itself in the reduction of animal life in the reduction of insect life in the reduction of plant life and also many other things including microorganisms in the river and therefore it is actually believed that by not doing so leads to dominance of invasive species in the polluted river and this invasive species become the hot spots of variety of different human and animal pathogens they also lead to loss of species and the food chain in general and they have an enormous uh, impact on overall human health uh, in terms of emergence of new infectious diseases and loss of biodiversity and therefore we must ensure that biodiversity including microbial diversity is preserved along the rivers in the country that brings me the role of stakeholders what is the role of stakeholders in this and i already mentioned that stakeholders are many in generating this particular movement in the rejuvenation of all our river bodies the stakeholders include not only the scientists and technologists not only the government not only the policy makers but it also involves the common public in general if we all are able to work together i'm pretty sure that we will be able to maintain good health of all our rivers and the basic steps required to maintain healthy rivers are continuous desilting of tributaries before they join large rivers treat the wastewater from the drains which are pouring out into the rivers and tributaries divert the water of drains from active ponds and treatment before rejoining the main river generate constructed wetlands this is another concept that is actually coming up and i would like to encourage all of you who are interested in seeing these solutions how they are implemented we have small demo plants that are there in niri nagpur and i would like to invite you to niri nagpur to see some of the solutions how we actually do there a proper land use management using treated water to address over excited surface water and develop river health indices all of these together if you are able to do i have no doubt that we will be able to maintain the health of the rivers at highest standards that can be there so as i said a combination approach is required from all stakeholders to rejuvenate and maintain the health of our rivers across the country and as i said that requires researchers the scientists and the technologists who can monitor and form baseline information and who can also develop remediation protocols for rejuvenation and restoration strategies it should also involve industries which can scale up the solutions that are generated in our laboratories science and technology solutions in terms of generating wastewater treatment plants and that can actually also form a proper research industry interface and of course as i said once again government and policy makers and citizens they have an equally important role to play to make our polluted rivers into acceptable ecological balance in our river i just want to actually briefly tell you about this particular problem and then i will end after that 
is what is the problem of fresh water stress and storage loss in recent times what you see here is an index called an index has been developed called fresh water stress and you see across the world what are the areas that are facing today the fresh water stress that could either be because of polluted rivers or that could also be because of contaminated groundwater all of it leads to actually less availability of fresh water stress and we are actually among the part of that particular hotspot around the world and if we actually don't take care of this we must learn from history the historical records suggest that about 2200 bc there was a large drought that came by the water resources dried up and in fact the mythical saraswati river that used to flow through rajasthan and all all the way from punjab haryana rajasthan gujarat and eventually meet the arabic sea that actually dried up during this particular time and a prolonged drought that the world faced around 2200 bc is what is thought to have destroyed our civilization from harappa and mohenjo-daro our civilization in lothal and many other places across the bank of the mythical saraswati river and this situation is indeed possible even today because of the rapid change in environment and the climate change it is up to us to slow down this particular change and make sure that we have sustainable living and for the sustainable living we have come up with several snt solutions and i just want to give this example is that how do we make sure that our ground water resources are also maintained at a level that we can that is desirable and for that just like the rivers on the surface of the earth they are also what are called as aquifers below the surface the rivers which are below the surface of the earth and they also need to be recharged continuously and the rampant use of ground water across many places around the world has also led to the depletion of ground water resources in many parts of the world the example that i show you here is from a village called chotuppal about 60 kilometers from hyderabad in this area the land had started becoming almost semi arid almost like desert like because they only dependent upon the river upon the rains during the monsoon but the ground water resources had actually started depleting very fast and it is at that particular point of time and in fact at that time because of the depletion of resources many young people started migrating away from chotuppal to larger cities such as vijayawada and hyderabad it is at that time one of our institutes in hyderabad the national geophysical research institute or ngri they went there and they said that we will actually make uh, we will bring sustainable solutions to the village people and try to see whether we can recharge the entire groundwater surface now all of us have word heard the word called groundwater recharging or water harvesting rainwater harvesting but that has to be done very judiciously and what we did is our institute ngri hyderabad they went and mapped all the subsurface structures including aquifers using a helibone method helibone means helicopter bone electromagnetic sensors and they can map resources below the surface of the earth and when they did that they found they discovered a very large aquifer just below the chotuppal village and what they figured out is that if water is harvested in a particular area like this the ground water resources can dramatically improve and that's exactly what we started doing in 2015 and today the ground water resources are such that on the surface we have plenty of water there is a lake that has been created and the ground water the aquifer has been completely recharged so much so that what had turned into a semi arid land the villagers are now growing paddy in that particular village and all of you know that paddy is a very water intensive crop and as you see here the villagers villagers there have become prosperous once again and many of the youth which had started migrating away from this village into urban areas have started migrating back because agriculture using paddy and all offers them very attractive employment opportunities based on our success we decided that we will now actually do a very bold attempt and that map 
all the subsurface structures in the deserts of Rajasthan, Gujarat, and Haryana. And then we propose to Ministry of Jal Shakti that CSIR can come here and make actually all these resources, we can map the resources and possibly suggest remedial measures just as what we had done uh, in Chotupal in Hyderabad. And we are very honored that the Minister of Jal Shakti, the Honorable Minister of Jal Shakti, Sri Shekhawat Ji, and the then Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Harshwardhan Ji, graced, our, okay, graced the function in which we began the project about uh, a year ago. So what we have actually undertaken is a very, very bold experiment where we will be mapping subsurface aquifers in the entire uh, desert of Rajasthan, North Gujarat, and South Haryana. And then we will propose to the people there how these resources can be you now rejuvenated so that there will be plenty of water available in this. And our dream is to convert Rajasthan into a very fertile agricultural area. And we do hope that with the support of many, many stakeholders, government, policymakers, and common people, we will be able to indeed uh, realize our dream in the coming future time. What I would like to do now is thank you all very much for your attention. I would also like to greet all of you on the occasion of Vasanta Panchami and Saraswati Puja. I would also like to acknowledge the help of my colleagues in Niri Nagpur, especially Dr. Atya Kaple, and headquarters, my office, especially Dr. Purnima, who helped me in putting together this particular presentation and also advised me on how I can actually talk about the conservation of rivers across the country. Thank you all so very much for your paying attention. Thank you, sir for an extremely detailed lecture on conservation of water, challenges faced today, impact of water pollution on freshwater bodies, impact of urbanization on riverbeds, multiple research opportunities for students by cleaning up municipal wastes, work on sewage management using microorganisms to treat sewage before dispersing it in the water bodies, the amazing technology being used by Neri at Prayagraj and other cities for purification of water, the Herculean task of maintaining the health of the rivers and how each one of us have to do our little bit to bring about a change for the better. How we need to learn from the past, that is what should open our eyes. Thank you so much, sir. It is my proud privilege to propose a vote of thanks. I, Mrs. Sujata Ali, on behalf of Dharampet MBDO Memorial Science College, Nagpur, extend a very special thanks to our chief guest and keynote speaker of today's Golden Jubilee Science Lecture Series, Honorable Director General Council of Scientists and Industrial Research, Ministry of Science and Technology, Government of India, Dr. Shekhar Mandeji, for sparing his valuable time and giving us an insightful and thought-provoking lecture on conservation of rivers, research opportunities, role of stakeholders, and the future of the nation. Thank you very much, sir. I wish to express my sincere thanks to our president, Dharampet Education Society, Advocate Shri Ulhas Ji Aurangabadkar for joining us online today and also our Vice President, Advocate Shri Sanjeev G. Deshpande, our Secretary Shri Ratnakar Ji Kikatpure and all the other honorable members of the management for being here, supporting us, encouraging and motivating us and always being there for us time to time to take this institution to greater heights. Thank you, sirs. I would like to take this opportunity to place on record my deepest gratitude to our dynamic, progressive, benevolent principal, Dr. Akhilesh Peshwe, for being our strong backbone and support system of this great institute. We are always going to need your support and guidance, sir. Thank you. I must mention my deep sense of appreciation 
for all our special invitees, guests, scientists, scholars, academicians, teachers, and students who connected with us online for today's lecture and helped us in making this program a huge success. My special thanks also to Mrs. Ruma Kapri, Lecturer, Computer Science Department of our college for providing the technical assistance in the smooth conduct of this program. Thank you, ma'am. I declare the program has now concluded. May I request all to please stand while we recite the national anthem. Please begin with me. Janatan Manadi Nayak Jayahe Bharat Bhakya Vidhata Punjab Sindh Gujarat Maratha Dravila Utkal Banga Vindhi Machal Yamuna Ganga Uttal Jaladita Ranga तब शुभ नामे जागे तब शुभ आशीष मागे गाए तब जगाता जन गण मंगल गायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे Jaya 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 He Bharat Mata Ki Bharat Mata Ki Jai Bharat Mata Ki Jai Jai Thank you all once again. So with your Thank permission you. and the permission of our Honorable Chief Guest and President of Dharampet Education Society, may we please uh, close the program and the session, sir? Yes. Thank you all yes. very much. Ruma ma'am, over to you.